Hi, welcome to episode two of this theater podcast thing. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> Sam is very sick today, so he is not going to be able to participate. But I'm Ben from last time, and I will be taking over hosting. Um, and with me, I have... I'm Grace, and I am a freshman. I am Madeline. I am a sophomore psychology and musical theater major. I didn't do any theater in high school, but I'm glad that I can do it now in college. And yeah, that's pretty much all the experience I have. Cool. (laughs) Um, I'm Danny. I'm a communications major. My theater experience is limited. Um, I did one act in high school and that's about it. All right. Awesome. So, and you know me from last time. So today, this week, we are doing Newsies, um, and I I gotta say, like, I got this call last minute, so I had, like, no experience with the show before <laughs> about three hours ago. I started the uh, Netflix Disney version, um, the, the Broadway version, sorry, uh, and yeah, so um, as far as that, that is my only experience with it at this time, <laughs> but just as a reminder, we are not reviewing specific shows or what specific shows did. We can talk about that, but this is about the show overall, the book as sort of a, uh, an idea. So with that, um, let's just jump into overall impressions. Anyone want to start? I love the show, but... I don't know. I I love the music. I love the dancing. Um, I think a lot of Broadway shows are either like strictly dancing musicals or strictly not dancing musicals. And I like dancing musicals. And I like the storyline. It's very Disney-esque for sure. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I would agree with you. I also love the show. It is very Disney, though, um, and it's definitely a danceical. So if you're not about that, then sorry, you will probably <laughs> not enjoy the show. Um, yeah, I also like the show, um, and same thing. Like, it's very like Disney, very like more for I wouldn't say children, but it's very like. Um, not a cabaret kind of thing for sure so um and I, I i liked it i mean it was fun um some of the music was really good and in the end i, I agree with what uh, maddie said it's like it's very disney and to me that's both a good and a bad thing but i'll get to that um later so with that uh let's move on and let's talk about the script specifically the the writing the characters the story arc um And if no one else has anything, anyone want to start that off? Um, uh, For the script, I think the way it's written, if literally, if you just read the script, you will end up having some of a, like, New York accent, no matter what. (laughs) Just because of the way it's written, you, like, don't even have to try to have an accent if you just read the words. Um, And, again, like, that's, it also kind of shows how it's super Disney-esque, because everything just kind of is perfect and you know like we didn't read through the whole thing but you know in the end the guy gets the girl everything is great you know I don't know there's not a whole lot of depth to it I guess yeah um I would agree with that I think it's it's a good script but it's not necessarily anything special um and regarding the characters a lot of them are pretty stereotypical um especially Jack particularly um so yeah i think uh i don't know the writing like i said before very disney character wise i really enjoyed a lot of them but again it's because they're sort of stereotypes they're sort of uh excuse me um like cookie cutter almost type of characters and where that really annoys me the most personally is villains pulitzer i just in this show, I just didn't care. Like, he was just such a cartoon villain that I I didn't find myself interested in him or what he was saying. Uh, when he's trying to, like, threaten them and, and, and sort of muscle his way through, I was like, okay, so he's Jafar and Scar mm-hmm. and, all you know, Ursula all wrapped into one, the same as any other Disney villain. Yeah, I agree. Um, 
But I also think he's a little different than other Disney villains just because he's not like, I'm just going to be mean because that's the kind of person I am. Like, low-key, he kind of is. But, like, at the same time, he's trying to run a company and, like, he has to change it so he doesn't, like, not have money. But that's what they kind of try to do. But in the end, he does end up just seeming like another typical villain because I, li- I like when shows are, like, make you like the villain, you yeah. know? When you're, like, rooting for the villain low-key. Um, I agree. Pulitzer is definitely, like, a typical villain. But I will say, I think it's interesting how, like, a lot of Disney villains take it upon themselves to do the thing that they're trying to do. But Pulitzer makes everyone else do it for him. <laughs> and I appreciate it. I can appreciate a man like that. <laughs> yeah, I think um, with writing wise and character type I think just like from the beginning like the language that they speak um the newsies compared to like Pulitzer you can definitely tell like their status and everything um but going off with Pulitzer I think I agree he was a businessman so he was just trying you know to make money for the company and everything well and I I think they did a decent job of bringing that idea back around in the end but I, I think my biggest problem was the beginning especially the first um the first time he's introduced and he has the bottom line song, it felt like the only reason he picked the Newsies was because he was evil. There was like no, yeah. it was like, oh, we'll, we'll screw them over because that'll make us money and that's the easiest thing to do because I have no soul. And then at the <laughs> end, at the end, it's like more of a businessman thing with the compromise that he and Jack reach. I liked that a lot because that was kind of a cool, okay, he's still a smart businessman, And he's not backing down because that would make him look kind of weak or whatever. And he still does need to sell more. But when Jack presents him with a good idea, he goes, huh, I like that. And you're good at what you do. I'd like to hire you. So I think they redeemed him a bit at the end. But through most of the movie, I just didn't, uh, or show, I just didn't kind of care. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll jump topics if no one else has something on the villain. Because I think the weakest part to me... And the part I did I cared about the absolute least was the love story. I could not get into Jack and Catherine at all. Like I, by the end of it, I, I think their last scene together, I was sort of crunched for time trying to get over here, so I was skipping. <laughs> I skipped their song together because I was like, I know exactly what this oh, is. This yeah. is going yep. to be a stereotypical <laughs> like, oh my god, I love you so much, even though we're so different, yep. we're the same, and I just. I kind of tuned out of it. It didn't matter to me. I yeah. I literally sat there and said to myself, I'm not sure how I could care about these <laughs> characters less right yeah. now. Yeah, I think, I don't know. When I first watched the show, I was really intrigued because I um, am used to, I saw the Disney movie first um, before the musical. And in the Disney movie, the reporter is a guy. Yeah. And Jack falls in love with Danny's, uh, Danny is his name, right? Davy. Davy. Sorry, you're Danny. I don't know why. But Jack falls in love with Davy's sister. And in the show, she doesn't even have a sister. But I thought it was cool in the show how they made the reporter a woman. And I don't know about the love story. Like, you know, of course there has to be a love story in there because it's Disney, you know. But I like the character of Catherine a lot just because she's such a strong, like, woman, like, in the show. And, um, yeah, because, like, reporters weren't really women back then. And she went against, like, her father, who was, like, super big Pulitzer man, you know. So. Um, And I think we discussed previously how Catherine would be a stronger female character if the love story wasn't a thing. Yeah. Um, And. Go for it. Well, I was just going to say, I was actually going to bring that up because I have I felt like her sort of feminist air, that, that there's like the scene with Jack um, and before their love song, she kind of gives it to him, you know, she gives him the business and taken alone, that's a very sort of like strong female feminist character. But at least to me, that moment felt very undercut by her behavior and a lot of the rest of the show. Um, she, her like awkward romance with Jack, like the fact that she just had to have this poor urchin boy sweep her off her feet in order to stand up to her father 
I mean, I guess she kind of did that already because she went and worked for a different paper, but it felt less... <laughs> I was never here. <laughs> okay, sorry for that quick interruption. Um, so, I, I don't know, it just felt like that it was undermined a little bit by her other actions, and that that frustrated me, I guess, because I wanted her to just be a strong character, and, and in the end she kind of was, but also at the same time she was kind of a prop for the love story that Disney has yeah, to shove in. Do you have something else? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, no, you're good. Um, I don't know. I also feel like Catherine might have been a bit of an afterthought in this show because, like, again, in the movie version, like, Denton is the reporter. Um, and Sarah in the original wasn't a particularly important or strong character, oh. and so they were probably like, oh, well, let's get rid of this, but we still need a love story. And I think that's where the problem arises. I'd agree with that. So I, I guess I would just, to break it down into acts, um, because I know last time we talked a lot about like the first act of Sunday being strong and the second act of Sunday being weak. What did you guys think, like act to act? Did you have a favorite act? Do you think one is stronger than the other? Personally, I think they kind of work together. And yeah. mm -hmm. while I think I enjoy act one a little bit more, um, because I prefer the build of the arc rather than the way they tried to make a twist happen. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? I would agree with that. Yeah. 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 Um, I think Act 1 is a lot more, like, happy-go-lucky kind of, because they're not really in the thick of things yet. And then in Act 2, they kind of have to get their crap together and, like, do this revolution, you know? And it gets a little more serious, as serious as it can yeah. be, you know, yeah. Disney, being a kid yeah. musical. Yeah. <laughs> and act one is fun because you get introduced to a lot of dynamic characters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd agree with that. I think what bothers me the most about act two is, and this, this happens, and I feel like this, again, like Disney writing in a nutshell, you know, I'm not really breaking any new ground here, but the whole arc with Jack felt contrived his oh I can't go on now that Crutchy's been captured and I don't want to be like it redeemed itself a little bit as it went on especially when Davey asks him directly like tell me how quitting does Crutchy any good that I enjoyed and then but the really really big problem I had was when Pulitzer like offers him money to quit and he does it uh, I just like yeah. that that trope frustrates the absolute crap out of me because if I'm in that position, I'm like, yeah, I'll take your money. And then I'm going to walk out the door, go back to where I was supposed to be at revel, you know, revolting and be like, all right, screw that guy. Yeah. Let's keep going. I don't know. Maybe yeah. that's just me. I, I, I hate it when the characters are like, Oh, I have no choice. I told him I would do it. So I have to do it. Right. Like, no. And the other thing is I don't, I don't know. It didn't seem in the beginning. It didn't seem like money was a big deal to Jack, you know, and for Pulitzer to offer him all this money and then that's enough to make him, like, turn his back on all of the people that he's lived with for his life, like, just doesn't really make sense, mm -hmm. you know? I think I have to agree with that. Um, in the beginning, it was more like Jack cares about other people, like, he would, like, watch over um, Crutchy and then um, stuff like that. But then, like, towards Act 2, it was more, like, his love story, and he was, like, more into Catherine and then more into, oh, like, how do I sort of just... It was it, it felt more like he was thinking about himself towards the end. So Yeah. And I think that's just trying to make a character grow and not quite going about it the right way. <laughs> yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, so what do you guys think about Santa Fe? Because I feel like that's an interesting... Um, sort of thread th in the in the show and I before I say what I think I kind of want to know what you guys thought of the idea of Santa Fe as it keeps coming back yeah up. I don't know I don't uh, I feel like it's um it's always been Jack's dream and um even though he's not like happy in New York that's where all of his like friends are and where his life is and I don't know, Jack just doesn't seem like the kind of character who would be like, all right, I'm not 
good enough to tough this out. I'm just going to leave and go somewhere where there's no problems. You know, I don't know. I think it's like a classic kind of the grass is greener kind of thing. Um, and again, like it's, I wouldn't say it's necessary, but it's it's good to have that in a leading character. So at least the audience is able to pick out their flaws a little better. And it doesn't seem like a, I don't know, like one of the perfect leading character kind of situations. Yeah, yeah it makes them a little more complex too, because he has this like struggle along with all the other struggles that are happening during this whole revolt thing. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's more of like, oh, he's dreaming and he wants to, like, leave a life of poverty and stuff like that. And it's almost like the writers were trying to sort of, um, like, write a song or, like, do something where the main character would relate to, like, the audience and stuff like that. And so they're like, oh, let's write about Santa Fe. And so it just became a whole thing. Well, and I, I would say, um, I think my, I think this is actually one of my favorite parts, and it's not exactly new or bold, but it did break the mold slightly of, oh, the main character is going to get what he wants. Because I thought early on that, okay, he's singing about Santa Fe. This is a Disney production. That's where he's going to be. Like that's he in, you know, he's going to get the girl, beat the villain. Um, and then he's going to start his new life, his perfect new life in the perfect place he's been dreaming of. And I liked that they subverted that. Again, it's not exactly a brilliant, bold, new idea to subvert that wish with a, mm-hmm. oh, he sees the real wish he had all along. <laughs> I literally have in a note, um, Disney ending, win family love. And those are the three, <laughs> like, the three things I have written oh for that. Oh my the gosh. Um, because... Literally, one of the other characters says, "But, but we're your family here. <laughs> Why would you want to go?" Oh um, man! But I, I thought it was fun. Yeah, I thought it was a good touch, at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think they're. Um, yeah, that's a good point. And I think the fact that, um, like I said, like Jack doesn't seem like the kind of character who would just like leave and go away. You know, um, that's kind of a little bit of foreshadowing that it probably won't happen, Mm -hmm. you know? And I also think that um, Jack, a character living the lifestyle that he's living, can't attach himself to a lot of things. And so the idea of Santa Fe and the way that he attaches himself to Santa Fe is important for him as a character because otherwise, like, we can't really identify with him. Well, and and actually, that's that's a good thought, and I hadn't thought about it that way. But now that you've brought it up, I guess, too, it gives him something to grasp at when he's in you know sort of this horrible situation at the beginning and by the end he's found you know love he's found uh, a career you know he's being offered this this artist job so he's going to be doing better um monetarily and so he's and he's realized that like he does have other things to hold on to you know his his newsies and his uh, now, I guess, girlfriend, we can assume because it's a Disney show, they'll get married and live happily ever after (laughs) um, because, you know, good, clean Disney fun. So does anyone have any final thoughts on script? Characters, anything? I guess I'll just say really quickly, I thought the characters were fun, um, especially the newsies. They were, again, sort of like cardboard cutout characters, but I enjoyed that in this one. Mm -hmm. Um... But so it looks like we should be moving on to the tech side. Now, this one's really interesting to talk about because I know for me, the only version I've seen, as I said before, is the Disney. um, I keep saying Disney. I mean, the Broadway version. All of them Mm -hmm. are going to be Disney. Yeah. (laughs) But the Broadway version that's available on Netflix. Um, But the the point of what we're going to be talking about is more potential for tech and the way tech is involved in the show. So. I'll just say, in the version that I got to see at the Orpheum in Omaha, um, which is very similar to the the regular Broadway version, the projections that they use are tight. Like, it's really cool how they utilize those. Yeah. In In the Broadway. Yeah. And Sam said... Like, we were talking about it yesterday, and he was, like, he loved how they use the projections, and there's an, you can easily overuse projections, but they didn't, you know? They kept it, like, 
only when they needed to and when they did it was used really effectively um yeah I think we also talked about like um set wise and like how to build it because like on the Broadway version they have like the different levels and that might be hard for like other schools or like other places to sometimes um make or something and so we talked like maybe you can get away with just having one level instead of like multiple Mm -hmm. levels and just like simplifying it a little bit to the Broadway version well I think along with that um one thing that is I I don't know if this is actually common on Broadway because I, I haven't gotten a chance to see a lot of Broadway shows but I've seen clips of several that use that like scaffolding idea where it's just a whole mm-hmm. bunch of scaffolding on stage and they cre- creatively switch out the scaffolding at times to give them more places to move. And that is very hard to do. Like I, I just keep coming back to what we would do if we tried to put this on at our university. And I cannot imagine us ever <laughs> attempting something like that. Yeah, that would, be, that would, it would be crazy. It would never work. But what I think we could do is something, and this is something we do commonly, is have a a set with um, a couple of levels, just like a big wooden construction with a couple of basic levels. But the, the other problem is you have to have an enormous space in front if you're going to do this with the amount of dancing that's supposed right. to be required. Yeah. yeah. But, and then you don't need a ton of levels to this. It's good to have an upper area to indicate like when they go and sleep on Mm -hmm. the roofs it's good to have an area that you could have a little bit up for the office for example so that you know they i love that little bit at the end where they're looking out the office window and like the newsies are out there singing and waving at them that was a fun touch um but that that as far as like set construction i think you can get pretty creative with it 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 has a couple of base requirements but i don't think it's overly complicated at its core because I'm, I'm struggling to say exactly why just like you can do it a number of ways yeah I guess. yeah yeah and the broadway version is almost always going to be the hardest version because it's broadway you know so much money and everyone yeah knows, everyone knows what they're doing to an insane degree yeah especially tech wise yeah um i liked what i liked that projections were brought into this because i feel I don't know what it's like in the actual script. We had a sort of um, transcribed version of the script that I'm pretty sure someone just wrote down (laughs) as they were watching the Disney version. (laughs) But I'd love to take a look at the original script and see what tech notes are in there. And that's something I think is unfortunately we don't have access to right now. But, for example, with projections, how would you handle this without that ability? I think that would be very tricky. Yeah. I'm trying to think when they use... They use the projections when they're writing, like, strike yeah. on the board. And mm. um, a lot of scenes, like, with newspaper headlines specifically, or, like, Catherine's scene with yeah. her song, like... I just when don't think typing. it would be as good. Yeah. I think it would be really difficult. I think the projections are really important, and they lend a lot to the story, because the set isn't... I mean, like, it's complicated, but, like, not in the regular way. You and know. it's regular Broadway. Yeah, especially if you're using, like, a more simple set. If you don't have the projections, then it gets kind of boring to look at, except for yeah. when they're dancing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, and especially if you're not doing the Broadway-level dancing, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm sure a lot of places have to simplify Water the dancing down. from yeah. the sure. original Broadway. Oh, my God. That... I, I'm not a, I'm not much of a dancer. In fact, I'd say my dancing is probably even worse than my singing, which is incredible. <laughs> but look, so looking at that was just mind blowing to me. It, yeah, I'm not a big dance guy when I'm watching. You know, the dance numbers they're fun, but they do not a whole lot for me. But it was it was still really cool to see um, how they they handled those. I especially like Crutchy I sort know. of flipping in and out. Yeah. And he um, still had, like, even though he was only using one leg, he saw so many dance things that he was doing. And the fact that, oh, my gosh. So I am a dance person, and I, like, have taken a bunch of dance classes. And imagining doing all of that dancing and then having to sing after that, <laughs> I couldn't do it. I would yeah. die. That would be so hard. If you want to see something crazy, it's not exactly, like, complicated dance moves, just a lot of physicality. Uh 
quick quick dip off subject, but next to normal, um, there's a good yeah. clip on YouTube of the song I'm Alive. Yeah. And he's just like this is another one that used a lot of scaffolding, but the actor, I think it's Aaron Tveit or something along I those lines. I love him. He's like Ooh. swinging around and running back and forth and he's singing this really big belting song and it's anyway, uh, crazy. I'll show it to you later, but so back on topic, tech, <laughs> tech for news, it's kind of rein it in a bit. Yeah. Um, I think the projections, the, so the, the main ways they used the projections were newspaper headlines. Um, I think a few like set establishing shots. And then uh, I think the biggest one that would be missing is Jack's artwork. And that's something we yeah. forgot to mention oh, yeah. in the yeah. script that Jack is such an artist. Yeah. Which I thought was an interesting addition to the to the show but that's i think that's what would be missing the most rather than the newspaper headlines is seeing because because jack does like the paintings of the the burlesque house or the Mm -hmm. i don't remember exactly what kind of theater it is Mm -hmm. but the theater backdrops and so you get to see those but his cartooning and his um to you know his his tube art that's just sort of like hiding up where he sleeps if you don't get to see that big I think you lose a little bit of the impact of, of what that's supposed to be doing. Yeah. yeah, and like insight into Jack and who he is. Because he paints, doesn't he paint something of like nature or something? He paints Santa Fe. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. okay, I was confused on that actually because when, um, I don't know that he ever says that. It's like Davy comes in and is like, what is that, Santa Fe? And I didn't catch, maybe he does confirm that, but I thought, like, they were just kind of running off that assumption. Yeah. But, I mean, it's still, like, it adds to the scene. Yeah. And the thought of Santa Fe for Jack, you know? And it gives him a little more depth because he acts like this big, like, tough guy who, like, doesn't take crap from anyone. Um and like, but he has a heart of gold. But he has a heart of gold, and he he's paints. A Disney hero. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, I did enjoy that, but it's because yeah. he's a Disney hero, right? I think if this, yeah, this, I don't know. I couldn't even imagine this musical if it wasn't Disney. Um, it would be sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I actually, that's interesting, and we're getting off tech a little bit more yeah, here, but I'm totally sorry. okay with that because I want to talk about this too. Yeah. I was looking at a little bit of the history uh, of this while I was watching because when they first brought Pulitzer on, I was like, okay, Pulitzer, I don't know how he was as a person, but he started the Pulitzer Prizes to try to like encourage journalists to expose corruption. And so I was like, sort of, is he being given a fair treatment here? Fun fact, he was sick during the actual, the historical strike that happened. He was not even in the city because he was like (laughs) almost deathly ill or something. But the the interesting thing is this is based on a real strike, but it didn't happen after the war. It it started during the war or the price hike started during the war and then after they didn't go down again or something like that. But what I think is most important is that we get the very disney version of this, but in reality, the Newsies were more than willing to just arm themselves and just beat the crap out of anyone in their way. Like, the whole, oh no, we gotta convert the scabs to our side and stop them from crossing. No, like, they just, yeah. they they just, just grab broom handles and pipes and beat them <laughs> up. Okay, yeah. but also, like, the part about the Newsies oh, eating what they didn't sell, that's true, too. So true. If, if I had to live like that, I would probably beat the crap out of anybody. I'm yeah. not saying I blame them. I'm just saying that's a fun <laughs> historic note for you all. That I would have loved to see this with a less Disney-purified version mm-hmm. of the characters, where they're they're still probably in the right overall, but they're like more than happy to just knock the shit out of some people. Yeah. 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 Um. A little darker would have been fun. Yeah. 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 That's true. Gritty. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. oh. easily, you could easily go darker with this thing. Guys, yeah. let's do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's just write rewrite our news. <laughs> um, okay, real quick, does anyone have any last tech thoughts? I know we kind of strayed away. Um, I was just thinking about this when we were talking about it. I was like, the only way, if you don't use like projections of a theater, does it have like that kind of capability the only way is like doing like fly rails and trying to do something with that yeah and like flying in like the stuff that like Catherine types or like any of the drawings but again it won't mm-hmm. give it that same effect that yeah. the production yeah. 
um, well, give it. So, and I think uh, honestly, at this point in history, most theaters are set up better for projection. Like it would be easier. I know here it would still be easier to do that with projections. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Even though we have a full hemp house like fly rail setup. Yeah. Um, yeah. it would still probably be easier to do with projections. Yeah. So, but yeah, I, I had that thought too. Just like, how would you fly? Yeah. Manage to fly all of that. So. If no one else has any final tech thoughts, then I guess we'll move on to our last um, full segment, which is the music. And mm. so I'm not a musically trained person to talk yeah. about that last time, but wow, this music was bumping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is so funny that you say that because Sam, um, we were talking about it and he he's like, one of the biggest problems um, he has with Newsy is that they're all tenors. Really? All of them are tenors. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and people like to hear tenors. And so that's, yeah. he that's complains why. about that in musicals all the time. If oh, he doesn't yeah. think they have enough. But he is a tenor. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's still. Okay. And also like, I understand, but these are all little boys. Like, that's of course true. they're going to be tenors. Yeah. You're I right. Feel like, I, I don't know. I, I feel like they're old enough like some of them would be teenagers or whatever the well, youngest Jack's supposed to be like 17 but yeah but um as far as the overall music uh not just complaining about the lack of diversity and, right. and vocal um what did you guys think I think it was just very upbeat keeping with that Disney yeah. theme like just very like Disney and like Catherine songs you can tell that it was like made for Catherine and I mean not to be like bias or anything but it was like made for a woman to like love a guy and stuff like that yeah. so i think just um yeah i think they just kept with that disney theme so very like upbeat very happy mm -hmm. yeah um and even there are a couple of songs like if you listen to the original movie soundtrack there are extra broadway songs mm -hmm. that they wrote for the show yeah. um and they actually like do a really good job of adhering to the original songs like yeah. they all fit in really well and if you had Never even known there was a movie version, and like you would, you wouldn't. Like you I would didn't. Be yeah, I yeah. didn't know there was a movie yeah. version. Yeah, to be yeah. Honest. it all and like fits in the movie really version. Well. Catherine doesn't even have a song because Catherine's not a character. She does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but, but like, like yeah. the bottom line, like that wasn't a song in the original, but you would never know. Well, and I, I looked at um, I, I looked these up so I'd have all the all the titles, and on the Wikipedia, at least um. It says it was was uh, it, it at least wasn't on national or on the original recording, mm -hmm. and it says added for national tour was the letter from the refuge, mm -hmm. Crutchy's little song um, at the beginning towards the beginning of Act Two, oh. right after King of New York. I I was kind of disappointed when I saw that that wasn't in like every version of the show yeah. because that was one of my favorites just because mm -hmm. it was like, oh, now I'm uh, someone's cutting onions in my room. No, that's <laughs> Why am I crying in the club right now? <laughs> but I want to I wanna actually go through a little bit, not necessarily song by song, but mm -hmm. talk about the, the um, shift in tone that happens a few times. And this is, of course, Disney. So like we said uh, a minute ago, it won't get truly, truly dark. But for example... Carrying the Banner is an interesting opening song for all, like, to intro all of the Newsies, because it's very upbeat, and it, it's almost scary to me how upbeat it is in contrast with their reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with what they're singing about, yeah. Yeah. that's not happy, yeah. <laughs> you know? And sometimes that kind of theme can go to reinforce the idea of like, oh, they're living in poverty, but they're upbeat, and that's almost like... But I don't think it was played that way. I think it was no. just because it's a combination of the fact that it's Disney and Broadway, yes. and it's a musical, and it's just... Mm -hmm. They were just like, no, we can't be too over the top with yeah. how terrible this is. We gotta... Yeah. Gotta yeah. make it somewhat upbeat. Well, and the fact of them, like, singing about how they don't have mothers and, like, slept on the street last yep. night. Like, yeah, and... And, and they're like, you'll be fine. Like, yeah. hopefully... Like, if you can find your mother, like... It's like what? they're making a joke out of it, and it's a little messed up. Yeah. But... yeah. But then, when they get to the world, will know. That one, like... I, I'm very easy to... Um, to affect, like, emotionally with this. But, like, that gave me, like you just said, goosebumps. I was mm -hmm. sitting there like, oh, here we go. Yeah. The anger's yeah. spilling over. They're getting mm -hmm. ready to rumble. Yeah. And then they backed off of it again. 
What's the song after The um, World Will Know? Immediately after World Will Know is Watch What Happens, which has some of that upbeat. And it's a different character, mm. so her... I think with Catherine, it's okay not to have that anger because she's not... Yeah, she's not in it. But the next one that involves the uh, the boys, the Newsies, is say, Seize the Day. Okay. <laughs> which is a but good Seize song. the Day is so important. Yeah. No, and I, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying like it, it undercuts some of the energy and the emotion from uh, World Will Know. Although I will say, actually, towards the end of Seize the Day, it gets angry again. But mm-hmm. the beginning of Seize the Day, it's like this return to the hopeful side. Yeah. And that's okay because it's Disney. But they, I think they missed a chance to go really, get really angry with it. And I would have liked to see that. I can agree with you. However, I also think that, especially at the beginning of Seize the Day, the scene in which Seize the Day is coming from, it makes sense that Davies like, kind of trying to, like, push the other newsies and it's a little more hopeful because they're all like down in the dumps about stuff you know what I mean yeah Yeah, and I think the other thing is um when they're singing the world will know there it's just like in their head you know this thought of striking is in their head and now that they actually have to do it like I would be scared you know I wouldn't really want to do it um and so I think they need a little more convincing Mm -hmm. that this needs to happen and they need to do this or yeah. else they're just going to get trampled all over for the rest of their lives, you know? Yeah. I think in the beginning of Seize the Day, like you said, we sort of see, like, that hopeful side, but I can also say, like, you can see in Seize the Day, like, that transition, if you want to think about it that way, of, like, how they go from thinking about something to actually, like, putting action into, you know, striking and, like, not refusing to, like, sell the papers and stuff like that. So it's depending on how you look at the song um, yeah. overall. Well, and I, I think that's a fair, that's a fair criticism of my point because I just, I don't know, for me, I was so into that, that anger and that drive and I wanted more. I wanted to see them storm the gates right there and then, <laughs> yeah. it, like, they back off five steps and then they make it about hope again which i'm not saying hope is a bad thing but Mm -hmm. in this case it felt like it sort of and then actually at the beginning of act two king of new york felt man i like the music itself is well written and the song was well performed obviously in the version i saw it but man i just feel like it kind of is a weird song for that what what has happened they got the crap kicked out of them by the police as jack says later most of them went back and sold again that day because they lost like they got beaten um yeah they made it into the newspaper but some of their friends got hauled off their leader who seems to be the only one charismatic enough to get them to do anything together is gone just hasn't like they don't know what happened and they're all sporting like Injuries, and I guess that's the point, but it still felt kind of, yeah, to me. Yeah, no, I've never thought about it like that, but I think I agree with you. It is a bit of an odd placement. However, not looking at that (laughs) critically for a second, the tap sequence gets me every time. Mm, That was good. (laughs) I I skipped a lot of the tap sequence. Oh, man, I love, (laughs) you need to watch it. I was crunched for time. (laughs) You're right. And I don't care that much. I don't want to hear it. I love, I love that scene. That's like, if we're just talking about dancing, that's like, one of my favorite scenes. And my other one is Seize the Day where they, like, dance on the newspapers. Yeah. That yeah. one was fun. That newspaper yeah. one, yeah. I think the way I like dance, and this is sort of a side note, but I think the way I appreciate or enjoy dance is a little <laughs> odd. And, like, from a from a distance, I recognize that dance is difficult and complicated, and I this is no disrespect to anyone who does or, or enjoys dance. This is just my personal feelings. I, I feel like dance loses me a lot because... And I hesitate to say it this way, but I can't come up with a better phrasing, is that it doesn't always feel like there's a I don't I really don't want to say it this way, a point. That's yeah. not that's not a good way to phrase it. But like for example, with the difference between King of New York and the one where they're stomping on the papers, um the one with the papers, it was like, okay, they're ripping the papers up, they're destroying, they're rebelling, they're revolting. I see where this is going, I see the story in it. 
Whereas then when they're just dancing about being the king of New York and doing a tap number, I'm like, all right, you're, I recognize that this takes a lot of skill, but I'm sitting there going like, okay. Yeah. If I, I can agree with that. Like, unless it doesn't really advance the plot, yeah. I, yeah. like the king of New York song, like, I don't know. The only argument I could make is that they're happy. So they're dancing, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but seize the day. Like, you know, there's yeah. a lot of imagery in that of them, like, yeah. Dancing on the newspapers, like crumpling it up and throwing it into the audience, you know, there's a lot of um, imagery with that. But yeah, I I agree with that. Yeah, I think from like a non dancer, like if I just watch these like two dance videos like on YouTube, I would like greatly appreciate them. But like from like seize the day with like the newspapers, like I get that, and then like. The tap scene in The King of New York, I feel like it was more like the writers were just trying to add something there. They're like, oh, we just need to make this musical we need longer. A dance. Yeah, we, we need, need a tap yeah. number because this is <laughs> a dance musical. Yeah. It really is, though. Yeah. This is so, a dance I think they just wanted to add something there, and they're like, why not a tap dance? No, yep. we why not? Had yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. That's entirely fair. And again, like, that's very much personal preference for me. Well, and I think Broadway does that a lot, too. I wish they would use dance more to strongly because it can be yeah. really strong. Like, um, I saw an American in Paris at the Orpheum, and they use dance, like, to, like, convey emotion and, like, deepen the character. And, like, you know, they use it in the right way. And I think sometimes Broadway is just like, well, dance because... We're Broadway, and yeah. that's part of the show. Well, and I think Newsies, I think Newsies is like almost the epitome of that. It's probably the most that I personally have seen. It might be the most stereotypical version of that, where mm -hmm. these Newsies, yeah, it's great that they that they do the cartwheels and the flips. That's very impressive. But why is that necessary to their character? And I, I suppose you could probably dive into a few ideas of reasons, but I don't know that it presents any specific strong ones. Other than, again, that tearing up the the newspapers scene. And I guess it provides some contrast between them and Pulitzer, but Pulitzer's mm. kind of in and out anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, other than that, anyone else have a last thought on the dance and the specifically no, um, those scenes? I think we were talking about yesterday how, just in general, like, even though the dance doesn't really drive the plot, if this musical didn't have any dancing in it, it would be boring yeah you know <laughs> unless yeah. they like yeah. expanded the script and like maybe wrote a few more songs that were more interesting <laughs> like <laughs> without the dancing I don't think it would be that good of a show yeah Newsies is Newsies because it's a dancical yeah. and that's yeah. just like that's widely accepted yeah <laughs> people are okay with that <laughs> I, I think the music has some some merit on its own like I think the music can stand but the problem I think that arises with the music and the dance like is that it's so upbeat and it lends itself so well to dance that if you just had people sort of walking across the stage to each other singing these you'd feel like something was missing yeah, yeah. something was just not there that needed to be there and I think there's a couple of songs that if you were trying to do it that way you could cut again King of New York is one mm -hmm. um it sounded great didn't seem to have a ton of place but I don't know I, I think it I think it fit well in the reprise or the reprise and our, our music director says reprise yeah, I, don't, yeah, I, don't I don't know, know why she says actually, that I keep accidentally calling it reprise because the, he just says it so much what is what is the right way? Is there a right reprise. way? I'm yeah, it's reprise. I'm I say reprise sure too. Reprise. I just keep saying it reprise on accident. It's fine. Don't listen to them. Mostly <laughs> well, again, mostly because like I I've never really done musicals um until I was here, and then the mm -hmm. first time I was in one that I had to sing, uh, my song had a reprise, and so oh. I had to work on it with this music director very closely in order to get to an acceptable level of competence. <laughs> Um, and he kept saying reprise, 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 reprise. Just like, so what it's is like burned into your mind. Yeah. But um, I guess going back to going back to the show, I think most overall the music is good tonally for the show. Aside from what we said, it is I guess my summation of the music. Um, and I kind of wish we had Sam here to talk about like specific musical themes because he pays so much attention to that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one thing I, 
I tried to remember, but I was, again, kind of rushing to put this together. In the, um, in the song World Will Know, there's an instrument they used. It was some kind of horn that they used that really changed the tone from carrying the banner. And I just, I didn't have time to figure out what it was before yeah. rushing over here. And that's the only, like, specific note I have. But anyone else have a final thought on music? Mm, I don't think so. No. Overall, good, but maybe mostly dance-oriented. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, real quick then, I guess we should just go into some closing thoughts, and Mm -hmm. then we are all going to give it an out of 10 rating uh, for how much we liked it. Now, a quick reminder on that, um, our rating out of 10 is not... If it's under five, it was horrible. Or if it's a five, like if you get mad when something you like gets a five, you know that's kind of five should be like eh, it, was, it was fine. It was nothing special necessarily, or it might be special in some ways, but not in others. Um, one is like I wouldn't even wish this on my worst enemy, and ten <laughs> is like this is the best musical I have ever seen, and nothing else comes close, almost. So, with that said, Grace, would you like to start us off? Yeah, um, I think I would go with a six maybe um and that's just because of the dancing and the projections um i mean the songs are very upbeat so yeah yeah i think i'm gonna go with seven and a half (laughs) um yeah i just even though like it is very disney-esque um i'm okay with that you know i don't have a huge problem with disney things i know it like frustrates some people but it doesn't really frustrate me that much and i really like the dancing and the music is so good um yeah seven and a half for me um i would give it a solid seven um i really really appreciate the music and i appreciate the dance i think the script leaves a little something to be desired with me Um, and it is very Disney and that's fine. Sometimes it just, I don't know. I wish there was more. Um, and I also have a little bit of an attachment to the movie version. (laughs) So, so then I guess I'll, I'll close it out and I'm going to, I'm a little sourpuss here because I give it a five to me. This, I really, really enjoyed parts of it. The certain songs just blew me away. The dancing was obviously great, although I'm not much of a dance person, as I said, Um, And the script was, again, it was very Disney, which for me, saying the Disney formula or a very Disney show carries with it both positives and negatives. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's going to have a good overall arc, or at least a fun overall arc, if not quote-unquote good. Um, But it's also going to have very caricatured uh, villains, specifically, if not all of the characters being a little bit cardboard cutouts. And... It's going to have good music. Disney has good music. Let's just be real. Yeah. Uh, you can't challenge the mouse there. <laughs> um, but for me, it falls flat in writing a little bit. There were just scenes I didn't care about. I didn't care about the romance. I didn't care about the villain. And so in the end, as much as I enjoy it, and I would see it again if it came to town or something, I just have to give it a five. It's a solid middle-of-the-road musical for me. So with that... That gives us an average rating among the four of us of 6.375. <laughs> so you heard it here first. Oh, the yeah. This is a 6.375 musical. Out of 10. And uh, we are the definitive body on this. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, you can quote us. Yeah. And, and just to remind, because I think I forgot to say that at the beginning, we're just a bunch of college students who do <laughs> the theater. Like, we are not Talking pretending to be butts. experts. We are experts. Yes, exactly. Oh, but, my gosh. Well, I think that's all. So yeah. thank you for joining us. Thank you to all three of you who participated and Woo. joined me. Um, thank you for to Sam for putting this together. And, yeah, thank uh, you for like taking <laughs> charge and. Yay, Ben! Yeah. <laughs> oh man, this was very last Being minute. Being stubborn, but, yeah. Sam. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm glad we could get this together, put mm-hmm. together, and I hope Sam gets better soon. I don't know what's up for next week. I don't know if he's said cabaret. that. I think we voted for cabaret. Yeah. It, yeah. So I think it's going to be cabaret. Um, don't quote us. Don't. No. <laughs> that you can't quote us. Uh, because. <laughs> Because Sam Sam would know for sure because he's the like I said he this is his he's the podcast president. but um, 
Mr. President. Next, join us next week when we do something that's probably cabaret. Woohoo! Have a good one.